Greetings friends, Pastor Joe here, uh, coming to you with this week's confirmation video about doubts and questions, and um, you could just as easily say this one is about the wideness of the stream of Christianity. So I got a few things I want to get into. We're just going to jump right into a passage uh, from John's Gospel that I love. This comes after Jesus' resurrection. Uh, we hear this story in John 20 where Jesus first appears to the disciples uh, in this upper room setting, but Thomas, one of the 12, is not with them at that time. And so Jesus pieces out, Thomas comes back from wherever he was, and the rest of the disciples, they say, Thomas, you're never going to believe this. Jesus is alive. We saw him. He was here. He talked with us. And Thomas says, you're right. I don't believe you. You're out of your minds with grief. I, I don't have an explanation for it, but but there's no way that I can believe that unless I see Jesus for myself, unless I put my hand in his side where they stabbed him, put my fingers in his palms where they pierced him. You know, we saw him killed. It, I don't know what you think you saw, but I just can't believe it. And we hear in John's gospel in chapter 20, verse 26, that a week later, the disciples were in the house again, this time with Thomas among them, and Jesus appears once again, even though the doors were locked. Jesus stood in their midst and said, Thomas, here is my side, here are my hands. Stop doubting and believe. And one of the things that always strikes me there, this, this you know, Thomas names those doubts that he has, and then it's a week later that our story picks up. And so, Thomas is still hanging out with the rest of the disciples. The disciples haven't said, well, you don't believe what we believe, so get out of here. Um, you know, like they were still community. They still walked with one another. Uh, and Thomas was still welcome among them. And I think that that story in scripture really ought to shape and inform how we look at our own doubts, both the way in which Jesus meets Do Thomas's needs in the midst of him naming those doubts, how God um, intervenes and, and provides what Thomas was asking for in this particular instance, um, but also the way that the disciples stayed community, even in spite of their different belief. Now, that being said, um, there are certainly examples throughout the, um, the stream of Christianity, the history of Christianity, where folks have said, no, 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 that's too far. Um, and so just brief little history interlude. So as Jesus ascended and left um, the work of the church to the disciples saying, you know, go forth and, and spread, share the gospel with, with all, every nation, um, disciples went to different communities and they were um, sharing the ministry that Jesus had shared with them, telling folks about God's love and faithfulness towards humanity. Um, and they were doing so with this expectation that Jesus would return and would return soon. You know, we see in, in Paul's writing, in his letters to the churches, there's this sense that it could be any day now that Jesus is going to come back. Um, but it was only as the disciples started getting older and some of them started to die that these communities where they had been ministering started to say, you know, we should really write these things down. Um, so we have this account that's been shared and passed on to us. And so that's where we get the Gospel of Mark, Gospel of Matthew and Luke and, and John. And you may be may have heard that there are some other Gospels that didn't make it into the Bible. Um, you know, we'll kind of talk a little bit about, you know, what got in, what didn't, and, and the, the creeds a little bit later on in our year. Um, but know that as these communities were um, starting to, to grow and to, um, to understand what it meant to be a follower of Christ, there got to be some real differences of opinion about what was at the heart of Jesus' message. And there were some threads of understanding um, that, you know, Gnosticism, Martianism, um, these folks that that put forward understandings of Christ's ministry that made the rest of the church go, whoa, 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 that's not us. And so it's in response to some of these other movements that were springing up around them that the church Catholic, with a little c, um, came together and 
set forth in the creeds uh, and in the the canonization of the different letters and books that became collected into what we know as the Bible, uh, that these things happen. And so, um, again, want I kind of lift up that little bit of history just to name, you know, this this journey that we are all in together, that we that we share this journey of faith and what it means to be a follower of Christ, how we are to understand God's relationship to humanity and how that informs how we're to be in the world. Uh, this is an, uh, uh, an ongoing conversation of interpretation that has been going on for generations and will continue to go on for us in this time, for y'all and those who are going to come after you, that the church continues to reform and continues to lean into and seek a greater understanding of God's relationship to humankind. You know, we believe that Jesus is the fullest, most present, most embodied understanding of the divine that has and will happen. You know, that when Jesus came, it was through Jesus that his followers knew uh, the heavenly father that Jesus taught them about. And yet, we also can look back at the historical record of the church and recognize that for a lot, you know, for the vast majority of the church's history, there are groups of people uh, who have been, um, whose voices have been excluded from the table. Women, you know, people of color, the all, all the many folks that um, tend to get pushed the margins, those often that, that Jesus was most intentional about naming that his followers were to be in the lives of, to, to be in fellowship with, uh, were voices that were often pushed to the sides. And so it's as, as we truly begin to live into this full sense of welcome, of everyone being welcome at the table, and then lifting up and listening to these voices that we start to hear again um, and in new ways how God has, through all this time, been present and active and moving in not just kind of one flavor of Christianity, but in these other ways in which people have been bearing witness to the grace that flows from Christ within their life, within their communities. And that, that kind of went off on a little bit of a tangent there, but again... I lift up both of these stories, that scriptural story from John, that historical account of kind of the organic differences that arise as believers seek to understand the fullness of revelation of Jesus and, and the ministry that we continue to steward, um, to name that, that this is a journey that we all share in together. That that if you are someone who experiences doubts and questions, that can be a gift. Doubts and questions in my own walk of faith have often been the things that have driven me to, to seek after those threads, to follow that curiosity, that energy, that, that inquiry, and have led to an even deeper, richer, more full relationship with Jesus and this faith that I cling to. So... Let that be my both my word of encouragement for those of you who experience doubts and questions, and let that be a word of um, reminder to extend hospitality and welcome. Um, if you're maybe not someone that experiences doubt or questions, but that that is grappling with those who are um, who have understood this calling and this ministry a little bit differently. Um, the, the stream of Christianity is wide, and we certainly do have a foundation and a core uh, that is revealed through Scripture and through um, these faithful accounts of the creeds and the, the ancestors who've come before us. But we're all seeking to just point folks to Jesus. So let us go together in that journey uh, and share in that mutual seeking of understanding. Thanks be to God.